Hey everyone, Brian Lagunas here, and today I'm going to answer another tech question. If you have a tech question you'd like to have answered, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below with your question, and I may just answer it in my next video. Today's question comes from Kaven. He asks, Brian, how do you add a delete button to each row of a typical data grid using MVVM? Well, Kaven, that's a great question, and this is a very common scenario that you'll see in just about every single WPF application out there. Deleting rows from a grid is just, it's core to any line of business application. However, in my experience, I've seen this done, I would say, in my opinion, wrong. Let's just put it this way. If you ever have to have a collection of view models to represent data objects in your grids, eh, you're probably doing something wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly delete rows from your data grid using MVVM using the approach that I would use in my own application. So enough of this chit chat, let's get to the code. Roll that intro. The application we are working with today is a very simple WPF application. As you can see, our main window has a data grid defined and this data grid is binding to an item source called people. So if you look at our code behind, we can see that we are setting our data context equal to a new instance of main window view model. If I go to the definition of this main window view model, we will see we have a single property called people of type observable collection. And when this view model instance is created, we are generating just a random list of 25 people to add to our list. Let's go ahead and run the application and see this in action. Here's the application running. And as you can see, we have a data grid populated with a collection of our people and for each row, that is representing a single person in our collection. Now what we wanna do is we want to modify this sample to add a delete button to each row. And then when we click that button, that row would then be removed from our data grid. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now the first step is we have to add the button to the data grid. To do this, we're going to add a data grid template column. We're gonna set the data grid template column cell template to an instance of a new data template. And this data template is going to be a simple button. And we'll just call this delete. Let's run the application and see what it looks like. Here's the application. And as you can see, we have successfully added our button to each row and our data grid. Now, the next step is to actually implement the behavior of when I click the delete button, we will then remove that associated record from our data grid. The first step to that is to create a binding on the command property of our button. Let's create a binding and I will call this delete command. I want to run this just to point something out. Let's run the application. I, oh, of course, this is not going to work, but I just want to highlight something. We're going to look at our output window and we're going to find this data error, this binding expression path error, the delete command property not found on object person. What this is telling us is that the data context for each row in this grid is represented by the corresponding person object the row represents. So the data context of this row is actually the first dash zero person of the second row, it's first dash one and so on, you get the idea. So this is where most people kind of go down the wrong path of creating this behavior. They'll say, oh, well, the data context of this row is the person, so I need to add this command to my person object. Uh, but I can't do that because this is the model object. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and create another class and I'll call this my person view model. They'll do this and then they'll go into the main window view model and instead of observer, observable collection of person, they'll make it person view model. And then they'll go through that and define the command on person view model. Well, we're not gonna do that. And I don't want you to do that either. Don't do that. That is not necessary. And the nearly over decade that I've been writing WPF applications, I've never had to have a collection of view models to represent something in my UI. Instead, what we wanna do is we want to define that command in our main window view model. So I'm gonna use a snippet called CMDG. This is a snippet you get from the Prism template pack. And this delegate command will be used to bind to the button. So this would be delegate command of person because this is going to be our parameter type. The name will be delete command and then we'll call this delete command. 
And what this has done is it has created a delegate command code snippet for me with an execute method for my delegate command implementation. So what I want to do now is I want to go to my main window. Now we've already established that the delete command currently is looking at the associated person objects as the data context. Well, now that we have defined that command on the main window, we want to give the window a name, something like, I don't know, window. What this will allow us to do is then set the element name of our binding to the window. Finally, what we'll want to do is we're going to set the command parameter equal to just binding. What this is saying, it's telling this button to look at the element name window, which in this case is our window. And now we're going to update this to say data context dot delegate command. So we're gonna look at the window component. We're gonna get the data context property of that component, which in this case is the main window view model. And then we're gonna find the delegate command property defined on that view model. Finally, we are passing the binding of the command parameter. This is saying we're going to pass the data context of this object of the button itself as the command parameter, which we have established this is going to be the person object. All we have to do now is implement the behavior of removing that person object. In this case, we're going to keep it very simple and we're just going to say people dot remove our parameter. Let's go ahead and run the application and see how it works. Here's the application running. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the delete button on the first dash two, and we will see that the first dash two person has been removed. I can now freely delete any of these people in the list and it will work exactly how we want it to. Not only that, but we kept our code very simple. We did not have to create new classes, extra view models or more overhead to implement a simple delete command.